Hi everybody, I'm Razvi. Welcome back to Poon 101 series. In this video we are solving the 6th binary from the Poon 101 Try Hack Me room. I've already downloaded the binary and first let us check what kind of file it is and what protections it has been compiled with. As we can see it is a 64-bit executable as always, at least so far in the series. We see it isn't stripped and it is dynamically linked. Regarding its protections, we can see it has been compiled with every single protections we have mentioned so far, even though we didn't go very deep into each one of them. That is, it has been compiled with canaries, with nxbit, the nxbit is enabled, and it is a position-independent executable. So let us execute it and see what it actually does. It asks for input, enter your try hack me username to participate in a giveaway, and it simply echoes or brings back whatever I write. So as always, let us try to break the program by providing a pretty large input. Okay, so nothing of interest happens, it simply echoes part of the input I provided, so I didn't manage to break the program. It isn't vulnerable to buffer overflows or vulnerabilities of the like. So let us last try some format string vulnerability by providing a format specifier, like hexadecimal, and as we can see, we are printed apparently a random number. The program, instead of printing back percentage %x that I provided, it echoed some strange string, some bytes or random number, whatever it is. While this behavior may seem strange, it is undoubtedly telling us that this binary is vulnerable to a format string vulnerability. And that is precisely what we will see in this video. We will discuss why and how format strings vulnerability happen, how do they work, and how we can abuse them, how we can leverage them, in order to either corrupt memory or leak memory. Now, before proceeding, let me tell you that format string vulnerability is a very powerful vulnerability that allows us to both leak, read memory, and corrupt memory, that is, write arbitrary values. In this video, we will see only how to leak memory, how we can read memory by abusing a format string vulnerabilities. We will see how to write corrupt memory with arbitrary values in future videos of this series. It is very important for us to understand the very foundations of format string vulnerabilities, how does it work in order to perform arbitrary memory writes. And now, before stepping right into it, let me link you, let me show you the resources I used back in the day when I was learning how format strings vulnerabilities do work. These resources, these links, articles I'm about to show you, I will of course link them in the description of this video, and I recommend you reading them if you want to further your knowledge about this vulnerability. If you make sure you understand and exhaustively read these articles, these papers I am about to show you, there is nothing you won't understand about format strings vulnerabilities. The first of them is Defcon Qual's Baby Echo Format String Vulns in Gory Detail from School Security, written by Rand Bose. Then we have Exploiting Format Strings Vulnerability by Scott from Team Teso. It may seem a bit outdated, but believe me, this is cutting edge explanations when it comes to format string vulnerabilities. We have Format String Exploitation Tutorial by Saif El Sherey. Sorry if I mispronounce it who just as a curiosity links or thanks to Corelan, which is a pretty good website when it comes to exploiting in general. Then we have format string vulnerability from Syracuse University. We have exploiting 101 format strings from Alexandre Sharon. And then we have Lab1 format strings from a security course given at Bristol University. If you make sure you understand all these articles, all these posts, you will for sure be able to exploit any kind of format string vulnerability. I also wrote about format string vulnerabilities back in the day where I explained how to solve a challenge called Confused Environment Read from another platform, in this case 247CTF, and in this post, I shown, I talked about format strings vulnerabilities, why do they happen, and I tried to explain the best I could. In this write-up you see on my page, I solved a challenge, a binary very similar to the one we are about to solve in this video. So, okay, with all this being said, without further ado, let's get right into it. First, I will be creating a format string toy example so we can all understand 
how does it work? The first thing we have to bear in mind is that formal string vulnerability happens when the printf family functions are being misused. All these functions, you can see printf, fprintf, sprintf, they end with f that stands for format. All of these functions take at least one parameter, that is the format string, the string that defines how the output must be formatted. That's why the vulnerability is called like so, format string vulnerability. Now talking about our toy example, as you can see, I defined an input, a string we are about to print, of course, and I am using printf to print it to the standard output. As you can see, this printf call is taking two parameters at this time. The format string itself, the string that defines how the output will be formatted, and the parameter that will be formatted according to the first format specifier. Now, let us compile this and let us execute it to see if it does what we expect. Okay, it prints the string. Now, imagine for a moment that we have several inputs that we want to print. Okay, this time we can see that the first argument of our printf function is still the format string itself, and then we provided three more parameters that will be parsed, will be interpreted by each of these format specifiers. For each format specifier, the printf function will exhaust, will take one of the parameters we passed following the format string itself. That is, input 0 will be formatted with this first format specifier, input 1 will be formatted with this second one, and so on. Let us compile it and see if it actually does what we expect. Yes, it does. Now, if we modify this one just like so, to parse input 1 as a hexadecimal integer instead of string, let us see what it does. We can see it printed something else. We don't care about what it is at this point. So this tells us that for each format specifier we provide, the printf function will try to print the following parameters. Now what will happen if we have only one format specifier and we leave all the parameters there? Of course nothing happens because we are simply not printing them. They will be passed either by stack or by registers when the printf function is called, but since we are not printing them, we are not formatting them, we are not parsing them, they simply won't get printed. Now, what will happen if we do it just the other way? Let's say we have just one parameter that will be formatted, but we specify more than one format string specifier. Uh-oh, what happened here? We got our string, of course, our format, and then we got printed some random stuff. What is all of this? Well, what happens here is that even though we provided just one parameter after the format string itself, the printf function is doing what it was instructed to do. Its behavior is nevertheless correct, even though we see these numbers right here and this null and we simply don't know what it is at this point. What's happening here is that this first format string specifier is parsing the first parameter or argument we passed to printf function and the following ones are doing just the same. In other words, we are leaking memory just because we are misusing the printf function. What memory are we leaking? Well, we will soon find out, but let me tell you that we are leaking the contents of some registers given the calling convention for 64-bit architectures. Remember that we are compiling this binary for 64-bit architecture. In 32-bit machines, the behavior is slightly different since the first arguments aren't passed by registers. In 32-bits, all the arguments are passed via the stack. In 64-bit architectures, the sixth first arguments are passed via registers. Now before disassembling these binaries so we can better understand what is happening, let us do one more test. And that is, let us print without any format specifier our input zero. What would happen in this case? Well, let us find out. As we can see, the string is printed and nothing else happens. Okay, that's okay. But what if this string contains some format string specifiers? 
just by any chance because somebody placed them there. Let us see what would happen. As we can see, once again, we are leaking memory. Now imagine for a moment that this input zero variable that I have right here, which is an array of chars, is provided to the program by the user, by the means of, I don't know, scanf call. To make things easier, I won't perform a scanf call. Just imagine that the user provided this input, as we previously did when we detected the binary was vulnerable to format strings vulnerabilities. If you remind, I provided just percentage %x. And that's what we are about to do right here. If we compile and execute the binary, we can see that we are, of course, leaking memory. So in order to make things easier, I will be printing just this format string as the first argument to our printf function. And imagine that this was the user provided input. Okay. And just for the sake of the example, I'm going to create here a secret, a password that let's say it is I don't know, dead beef, for example. Let us compile this binary, let us execute it. We can see we are leaking memory because the printf function is printing the user provided input without any format string. Okay, remember that this was the input the user provided with a scanf call. We are replicating, we are mimicking the behavior of a printf call that prints directly the user input without any format string. Now to better understand what is going on and how this format string vulnerability is happening, let me disassemble and debug the binary using Radar Chu. And before proceeding, let me change the source code and let me place a flash call right here. This is the source code of our main function. And as you can see, we have here our printf call and then we have the call to flash. Now remember that printf is being passed a bunch of percentage %x format specifiers, which is the user provided input. Let me place a breakpoint right here before the actual printf call happens and then one breakpoint after the flash. So we see our output. Let us execute the binary. We can see we reached our first breakpoint. Now, at this particular moment, the printf function is about to be called. That's where the vulnerability happens. And before continuing, let me print the contents of the registers and also the stack. Let me print some bytes from the stack. As you may already know, RSP is the top of the stack. And now let's continue the execution to see what happens here. In order to understand what is being printed and where did all this information come from, we have to understand how the calling convention for 64 bits architectures work. In this case, we can take a look at Wikipedia's page, which is uh, pretty good for this matter. Down here at the bottom of the page, we can see that we have the calling convention for 64 bits and we care about Linux in this case. Why do we care about all of this? Because this is the registers order in which the parameters are being passed to any given function in 64 bits architectures for Linux. As you can see, the order of the registers is RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, R9, which are six parameters. The next parameters are passed via the stack. Since the order in which registers hold parameters when calling a function in 64-bit architectures for Linux is pretty important, as you can see, I've wrote them down here. Now let us go back to our code and see what happened here. As you can see, at the time of calling printf, the first parameter, which is RDI, its value was this address. If we take a look at the sections of the binary, we can see that there is a read-only data that starts at this particular address, which is exactly the same first bytes of this address right here. If we were to print that particular address as a string, we can see that it corresponds to the string being passed as an argument, as the only argument, to our printf function. And you can see here it is in memory. That is because since we defined our input as an anonymous variable, 
it cannot be changed during the execution and this variable right here is placed in the read-only data section of the binary and its address is being passed as the first argument to our printf function as you can see the first argument is passed via the rdi register since we have only this string as an argument the printf function with every single format specifier it will try to print consecutive arguments and how are arguments being passed to functions well by following this register order we have on the top of the screen the calling convention as i have just said the first argument is the format string itself the second argument is rsi as we can see rsi its value ends in a8 2258 as you can see we have here a8 2258 now as you can notice we are printing only four bytes of memory because the format specifier that is parsing this data is percentage x that stands for unsigned integer printing as hexadecimal the third argument the next argument or parameter is being passed in the rdx register here we have it to be a8 2268 to be a8 2268 the next argument is of course rcx as we can see the value of rcx is 1f 2907.38 here we have it 1f 2907.38 now the next argument is r8 whose value is 0 and here we have it just a single zero since we are parsing the data the format string is interpreting the data as integer it is printing just one zero then we have r9 whose value is 1f 2c 11f0 here we have it 1f 2c 11f0 and then after we exhausted all these six registers that is our function has more than six parameters this stack will be used to pass the parameters or arguments and what was there on the stack when our printf function was called well that's why i printed 30 bytes from rsp because rsp is used to retrieve arguments from the stack and wherever rsp points to when printf function is called that's the address or memory cell from where the arguments or parameters of the function will be retrieved so we can see when the printf function was called we had a memory cell full of null bytes and then we have all these bytes that we are about to identify right now the first value we printed is zero which corresponds to this memory cell to this address then we printed just four bytes from this address right here and then we printed 4242 42, that corresponds to the first four bytes from this address right here now please bear in mind that with each format specifier the internal pointer of the printf function is moving up one memory cell in this case eight bytes even though we are printing just four it is moving from 30 to 38 to 40 and so on and the remaining values that we are printing here are of course contiguous memory from the stack that i didn't print when i executed this command okay so now let us take a look at how many format specifiers are there in order to find out information about all the format specifiers the printf function has i like to use the c++ documentation c++.com because it is pretty exhaustive it has all the information that we may need so these are the format specifiers the printf function actually takes now one thing to note and to bear in mind is that when we talk about integers we are talking about their default size that is 32 bits which is 4 bytes that's the very reason why we are printing just 4 bytes and how can we get to print 8 bytes by using the x format specifier well we have to use what is known as a length sub specifier in this case we can use the l sub specifier that stands for a long integer and we will print 8 bytes instead of only 4. in other words we have to modify by placing an l which is a length sub specifier this 
L I am placing in front of the X modifies hexadecimal to print 8 bytes instead of 4. Let us test it. Just like before, I recompile the binary. As you can see, we are now passing LX instead of just X. And I place the breakpoint right when printf function is performed, just before, the moment before, and then after flushing the data. Let us execute it. And now let me print the contents of the registers and let me print the stack, in this case, many more bytes. And now let us execute to see the output. Okay, so this time, as you can see, aside from the RDI register, which is once again the read-only data for the format string itself, its address, now we can see that we are printing full 8 bytes values. So let us take a look at them. RSI, which is the second argument, the register used for the second argument, its value is 7F ending in 618. Here we have it, 7F, 618. Then RDX, which is 7F, 628, 7F, 628. Then we have RCX, which is 7F, 738, 7F, 738. Then we have R8, which is 0. Here we have a 0. Then we have R9, which is 7F, 1F, 0. 7F, 1F, 0. And then we have the stack. Once again, the first value, the first position of the stack is 0. That's why it got printed the 0. And then using LX, we are indeed printing the full memory cell, which is this value right here, which is exactly the same. Then we are printing the next one, the next one, as you can see, ending in 100. Here we have it, ending in 100. And then the following values. And now taking back our toy example, if you remind, I said that we were placing a secret on the stack that we, in this case, were able to leak by using this format string vulnerability. If you take a closer look right here, when we got printed our stack after printing all the bytes, as you can see, here we have our dead beef, which is our secret. And starting at this position, are the ASCII values corresponding to dead beef. So now before proceeding, let us recap for a moment. We have seen that we can leak data from the stack by the means of abusing a format string vulnerability when the printf function is misused because it prints without a format string itself the input provided by the user. If the user happens to provide a format string, they will manage to leak memory data. The memory data they will be leaking correspond to this register we have right here, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, R9, and then the stack. For each format specifier, we are moving the internal printf pointer one argument ahead. In other words, this first format specifier will print RSI because remember RDI is the address of the format string itself or the user input in this case. So this format specifier will print or will parse RSI, the second one RDX, RCX, R8, R9 and then the first stack position, the second stack position, the third stack position or memory cell, and so forth. And now the last key concept we have to make sure we understand in order to be able to exploit, to successfully exploit format strings vulnerabilities is the positional argument that allows us to print any given position from the arguments the printf function takes. For example, as we have seen, with each format specifier, the internal pointer advances one position. Now, what happens if I want to print the very same argument several times? For example, let us take a look here at our debugging session. Imagine that I want to print this argument several times. Well, if I were to use LX, LX, LX several times, I couldn't do so. We can count its position starting from 1, because remember that 0 is the format string itself, and it is the argument number 1, 2, and 3. 
Okay, so I can specify the position of the argument that I want to print by using a positional argument. That is, I am reading the Wikipedia page for format string right now. We can specify the positional argument by using this pattern right here, where n is any given number followed by a dollar sign. So if I were to print only the third argument, I could do just like so. With all these calls, I am printing just the third argument, which is this value we see right here. Okay, let us test it. Let me compile and execute it. And as you can see, it is printing just the same value with every single call I am doing, regardless of how many format specifiers I am providing. This is particularly useful when you are leaking memory and you find that the secret you care about is, let's say, at the 100th position. What happens if our secret is in the 100th position? we would have to print a hundred percentage X format specifiers before reaching our actual secret. Well, using the positional argument, we could of course just specify that we want to print the argument from the position 100 and we wouldn't have to provide that many format specifiers. In fact, if we take a look here at our secret, we said that our secret is divided between these two values. So let us count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. We see that our secret, dead beef, is split between the tenth and eleventh arguments from our printf perspective. In other words, if we were to print just our secret, if we were to leak it, we could, of course, print just the 11th and 10th, rather said 10th and 11th position. And this way we are leaking our secret. We could parse this output with a Python script, for example, and we could, of course, translate the ASCII values, hexadecimal ASCII values into their actual representation as characters. And we would end up reading that beef. So that's how and why format strings vulnerabilities happen and also how we can abuse them, how we can leverage them to leak memory contents. Now, please bear in mind that we are exploiting format string vulnerabilities for 64 bits in this video and for 32 bits, it is slightly different because registers in 32 bits architectures aren't used to pass arguments to functions. The arguments are passed directly using the stack which is the drawing you have right here on the screen. Okay, so after all this format string practice and theory, the time to face our binary has finally come. As always, let us debug it by using cutter. Okay, so we identify setup and banner calls, which we don't care about. And then we see it is moving THM flag redacted into these positions, which are RBP minus 60, minus 58, minus 50 and so forth. It is then performing a call to read this one right here and read will save the bytes into the format buffer. And this format buffer, as you can see, it is later printed by printf without any format specifier itself. That's where the vulnerability happens. Whatever we provide to read will be parsed by printf will get passed as argument to printf. In other words, if this format happens to contain format specifiers, as we have just seen, they will be interpreted by printf and we will be leaking memory. And what memory do we want to leak? What do we care about? Well, of course, the flag, as you can see, the flag is hard coded into the source code of the binary. It is being inserted into the stack. But in this case, of course, the flag we see here in the binary we get to analyze is redacted because we have to, of course, exploit the binary remotely, not locally. But we can basically assume that the positions we have to leak will be almost the same. There will be, of course, just a slight difference, which is maybe the flag on the remote side on the server will be longer or shorter than we see here. So we will have to leak more positions. But that, of course, isn't a problem for us. 
Okay, so how do we do that? How do we leak all this memory? Well, as always, the first thing is writing our exploit, of course. So what we are doing here, since we don't know at what position the flag, our secret, will be in memory, we are, of course, just passing a bunch of format specifiers. So we print all the registers and then several positions from the stack, several memory cells from the stack. So we manage to discover where the flag is. In case we don't print the flag with this many format specifier, we will have to add more. Remember that an integer is four bytes by default. Using the length subspecifier for long, I get to print eight bytes, not four. I could, of course, instead of X, be using the P format specifier that stands for an address, but I don't actually care. It's just a matter of preference. I like using the hexadecimal specifier. In case you don't know what we're looking for, we have to take a look at the ASCII table. And since our flag starts with THM in uppercase, we are looking for hexadecimal values of T, which is 54, H, which is 48, and M, which is 40. It is context.binary, not binary.context. And now after executing it, we can see we got printed a bunch of values and we are looking for 54, 48, and 4D. 54, 48, 4D. As you can see, here is where our flag starts. Now, you may be wondering why this is printed backwards. Well, it is because the X format specifier parses the data, interprets the data as integer, and remember that are affected by little endianness. So it is internally swapping the bytes. In this case, strings, they do not care about endianness because the encoding scheme used by default is UTF-8, which encodes data byte by byte, and we cannot swap endianness or we cannot apply little or big endian to a single byte. But we don't care because we will manually change all these bytes. So we get to output the flag itself. So now what we can do is, of course, count how many positions are there until we reach our flag and then simply print the information we care about. So as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Our flag starts at the sixth position. And how many positions do we want to leak? As you can see, the flag locally is split into four positions, four memory cells from the stack, ending in the 7D58 value, which is this one right here, 7D58. Let us change our exploit to simplify it, to make it easier. So we want to print the 6th, the 7th, the 8th and the 9th positions. Let us execute our payload once again, our exploit, sorry. And we, of course, get our flag. OK, so now it is just a matter of parsing all this output and converting it back into its string form. OK, so parsing this output, we previously got to transform it into an array where I have each individual leak into one position. In order to do so, what I'm doing is receiving the original output, which is this one right here. I am splitting the output by the space character, which is this one here and here. I am retrieving the second item for the array, which will be all of this. And I am splitting once again by the dot which will give me these positions here. And now what I have to do is swap the endianness of all these bytes, that is reverse their order and, and parse them as actual characters. There are of course several solutions to this problem as how you can swap bytes and then print them. But what I usually do is from the output, from the array we just splitted for each position, I decode it as UTF-8 and then I convert it into an array of bytes using bytes from hex and I simply print the array in its inverse order. Then if I execute this binary, as you can see, we got here the 
flag itself being printed. Now it's just a matter of executing it remotely and see what we got. Okay, now that I am connected to try Hagmi's VPN and the virtual machine is up and running, I slightly modified the script, the exploit, in order to simply print the flag at the end by concatenating the bytes I am retrieving from the remote machine, from the remote binary, and I am decoding them once again as UTF-8, so I can basically get the string value and concatenate it. Now, if I execute it, I get printed the flag, but I see it is incomplete. So what I have to do is simply print more positions from the stack. And there we go. We have our full flag right here. Let me check now whether it is correct. And apparently it is. In this video, we have seen what a format string vulnerability is and how we can abuse it to leak memory data. We have seen why and how format string vulnerabilities happen and how do they work internally. We have seen how many format specifiers are there and how we can use subspecifiers to better format our output in order to leak as many bytes as we need. And we have also seen how to print specific positions from the print a function perspective. That is arguments at specific positions regarding the printf internal pointer. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. And remember, exploit code, not people. See you in the next one. Until then, GG.